Welcome, today we're going to be taking apart a Razorblade Stealth laptop. This is the RZ09-0281 model series. And to complete the job, you're going to need a small Torx bit. This is a T5. And then after you have the bottom cover off, uh, you're going to run into some small Phillips. So just have a small Phillips bit, like a 2 or a 2.5. So the first thing we'll do is flip it over. And then we're going to remove all of the uh, little Torx screws in the bottom case. All right, once you have this bottom case screws out, we can go ahead and wiggle this bottom case free. And we're just gonna lift up. Seems like there's a little bit of adhesive right here, but once you overcome that, then you can lift that bottom case off. And then you can see the inside of the laptop. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and disconnect the battery, and then we can go ahead and remove it. So with this type of connector, it's just gonna pull straight out and oftentimes with the battery connector it can pretty well be stuck in there this one wasn't too bad so as long as you just pull on these little tabs and work it back and forth you should be able to get it out no problem all right now we can go ahead and remove those phillips head screws that are holding in the battery Looks like they have a small screw cap on one of these screws, so we're gonna need a small bit to, oh no, that's just a cap, okay. So that is not a screw, it's a spot for a screw that they just decided not to put there. All right, so once we have those screws free from the battery, and looks like there's one more here at the kind of the side. It's a little bit hard to see because it's covered with the uh, battery cables. All right. That's why it's good to wiggle first. Um, whenever you're taking apart anything electronic, um, if you just lift up on it, there's a chance of damaging parts. But if you give it a wiggle, you can kind of see if there's anything else holding it, and there is. So it looks like there's one more screw hidden under the battery cable here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six screws holding on the battery, and that's just kind of a little dummy screw cap there. And then we can remove the battery. All right, so the little PCIe SSD is right here, and it's just a matter of removing the one screw. So we'll go ahead and remove that screw, and then you just kind of lift up a little bit on that SSD so it kind of pops up in the connector, and then you can wiggle it out. And pretty much the same for the Wi-Fi card. The little antennas you just lift straight up on them and they'll pop off. And then we can remove that screw. And pull the Wi-Fi card out of the slot. Same as the SSD. All right, so it looks like we have uh, good access to all the cables and the screws and stuff for the heat sink. So I'm gonna go ahead and just disconnect the video cable since we're gonna do that anyways and get it out of the way of the fan here. So we'll go ahead and remove both of the CPU cooling fans. And it's definitely a good idea to have a small spudger or something. So 
So for these little, um, real tiny connectors, it's nice to have a kind of a precision instrument to get in there and help you wiggle it out. Because a lot of times, like right here, it's so close to the fan that you can't get a fingernail in there. So, a small plastic tool, this is called a spudger. It's definitely a plus when you're disassembling a laptop, but if you have something else that's non-metallic and kind of pointed, it'll work also. Okay, so we have both the fans disconnected from the motherboard and we can go ahead and remove those fan screws. Once you have those two screws out, you can remove the cooling fan. And then we'll go ahead and repeat for the other side. Alright, this one's partially held under the heat sink, but it'll just kind of slide clear from that. And then that's how you remove the other fan. All right, we are down to the two heat sinks here. So one, one more screw on this little copper plate and it will come off. I'm guessing that's to help cool the chipset. And for the main heat sink, just three screws and it doesn't matter which order you take them off. If you are installing the heat sink, um, they have stamped numbers on the heat sink in the order that you're supposed to tighten them down to help uh, evenly spread that new thermal paste. As far as removal, it doesn't matter. And that's how you remove the heat sink. Alright, so it looks like to remove this motherboard, um, we're going to have to remove some other parts. Um, so this little, uh, I believe this is part of the speaker, is going to be, need to be removed. So we'll go ahead and remove those screws. And it's just a little cover. So this definitely needs to come off to access um, the hinges and to remove the motherboards. So we'll go ahead and set that aside and we'll repeat for the other side. So looks like we'll have to um, kind of remove the Wi-Fi antennas from the little channels. And the bit of tape here. All right, now we can remove the other small cover. And like the other side, it's just a few small Phillips screws. And there we go. So now that we have those covers released, um, we can see that the display is ready to come off. So it looks like a few screws on each side to remove the hinges. And we already have the um, video and webcam cable disconnected as well as the Wi-Fi antennas. So we are ready to separate the display. Um, but I think first on this one, I'm gonna go ahead and remove that motherboard. It doesn't look like it's held under the hinge screws at all, so to remove the motherboard, we're gonna need to disconnect all of the little connectors that are kind of cinched into it, um, except for the little Pram CMOS battery right here. This can stay put, but the other little connectors are gonna need to come out. So with the speaker connector, it just pops straight out. Um, this type looks like it's maybe for the touchpad. It's got a little retainer that you flip up. And then once you have that flipped up, you can kind of pull that little ribbon out. And then it's a good idea to 
flip that little retainer back down so it doesn't get broken. All right, looks like another flip up type here for the LED board. And we'll just pull that out and then flip that connector back down. And then another speaker connection here. So again, we're gonna use our little precision instrument and just work it back and forth until it comes out. And you can slightly pull on it um, just to help wiggle it out, but you definitely don't wanna to put too much pressure on this little speaker wire. So we'll just wiggle it back and forth until it pulls out of the motherboard. All right, we'll give it one last look. I don't see any more ribbons on the top here. There may be some underneath the motherboard, so after we remove these screws, uh, we'll go ahead and gently pull up the motherboard and just make sure that there's nothing else attached. And we'll definitely want to remove the little tape strip because oftentimes they can be hiding screws. So this one had a couple underneath, so we'll go ahead and remove those as well. All right, so it looks like we've got the screws out. We're gonna gently lift up on that motherboard and we're going to pull it downwards to clear these two little tabs here. And gently turn it over. And it looks like we're good to go. There's nothing else holding that motherboard on. And we can go ahead and remove it. All right, so our next order of business is to separate the display from the palm rest. So to do that, we're gonna to need to open it up. Um, different models have different configurations that they need to be in to separate the display from the palm rest. It's best to default to all the way open. Um, usually that's the way that it'll easiest or more easier, easily separate the two pieces. Um, but in some manufacturers, it has to be perfect 90 degrees or slightly closed. Um, but this one looks like it'll be okay once it's all the way open. So we're gonna go ahead and just remove two screws from each side. Leaving one in to kind of keep the pieces together. And then when you get down to the last two screws, you're gonna to wanna to support the assembly from below. And then remove those last two screws. All right. Once you have those last screws out, you can separate the two pieces. So we have our complete display assembly and then our palm rest and keyboard assembly. So it looks like with the keyboard on this, um, it's similar to a Mac. There's a ton of very, very, very tiny Phillips head screws, and those will all need to come out to separate the keyboard from the palm rest, but it is possible. But you're gonna need a very, very fine Phillips bit. I don't know what size that could be. It's gonna be smaller than a one millimeter though. Those are very, very tiny. All these little black spots are uh, little keyboard screws. And it looks like the same for the touchpad. So if you need to replace the touchpad, you're just gonna to have to take, a, take off those six screws and um, maybe flip this ribbon out of the way.
Alright, so we have a complete display assembly. Um, the razor blades are some, especially this model, are extremely difficult to uh, take apart the display assembly without breaking the screen. So we're going to leave this one whole. Um, if you do need to replace your screen, I would definitely recommend buying it as an assembly, such as this one. Um, it'll save you a lot of time and headache because I believe to separate these, there's a copious amount of adhesive here behind the bezel. So you're gonna need a heat gun and a real sharp spudger and a lot of patience to separate that back cover and bezel assembly from each other so that you can replace the screen. So definitely consider uh, replacing the screen as an assembly because it's a real pain um, to take it apart without breaking anything. All right, so that's how you disassemble a Razor Blade Stealth RZ09-0281 series. And this particular model was the 02810E71. And again, that was a Razor Blade Stealth. So if this video helped you or you found it informative, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.